Today, you're gonna get to see what my office looks like and also how I record and produce videos. Oh, and hey, I'd like to mention this video's sponsor, Skillshare.com. Now, it's a brand new year here in 2019, and Skillshare will help keep you learning and thriving as they offer 25,000 different classes in coding, design, business, and more. For instance, you're about to watch my office tour and production video, but afterwards, you might want to check out these productivity courses on Skillshare. Skillshare is also super affordable with a subscription that only costs 10 bucks a month, but if you're one of the first 500 of my subscribers to click the link below here in the description, you get the first two months free. So take advantage. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of Corsetro. So a lot of you have asked uh, numerous times throughout the years, you know, do an office tour or whatever and see what your setup look like or how do you, you know, produce your videos and what equipment are you using? Finally, I decided I'll do that for today because I couldn't think of anything else to record. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, what I'm going to first do is show you around my room physically. Uh, it's not that impressive. Uh, and then I'm going to switch to the desktop. I'm going to show you my process for how I record, which software I use, and how I edit as well. Uh, and then you'll get to see exactly, you know, what just one guy on YouTube does. All right. So for today's question, what is the best thing about your office? It could be a piece of technology or equipment or software, uh, the room itself. Let me know in the comments and make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet. And let's get started. All right, so this is the main, just uh, I don't know, perspective of the room where my office uh, and the computers sit. You can see there's three monitors. There's a Cintiq on the left, but we'll, we'll get to that stuff in a second. Uh, and so this is to the right of me when I'm recording. That's the guitar that you usually see. There used to be a white one. I'll show you that one in a second. Um, and then the window that you can see out. We'll get to this stuff in a second. I want to just go over here. We're going to start on this side of the room. And I have four guitars sitting up here. Um, before I get to the guitars, you see these black marks, uh, if the camera will focus, uh, on the wall. Now, these black marks, uh, they were due to soundproofing uh, these, these foam panels I had up. Uh, I used to have the office, uh, the, de the desk and the computer set up on that wall, facing that wall. Um, but once I moved it, I, I removed all the panels and I didn't do it properly because I obviously <laughs> I glued it there and went to rip them off like there's just these marks are over the wall I need to get those removed anyhow um, So yeah, this is just an acoustic bass from Epiphone that I've played maybe like five times in my life Here's uh, my worst guitar, which is an Ibanez H string I, if I'm lucky I could probably get maybe 180 bucks out of it, which I'm gonna, I don't know, probably sell very soon. Uh, here's a five string uh, Ibanez bass, uh, and then a um, acoustic electric Martin uh, uh, guitar right here, which is okay. I haven't played it in like years. Um, and then over here, this is a strange area, this house, it has these three doors in the background. And you, these, this is the background that you see when I'm recording, um, along with that shelving uh, right there, those compartments. But I didn't really want people to see the uh, the, the doors because they're strange looking. The the uh, if you can see the the, the um, will you stop freaking auto focusing? I'm just gonna go to manual fo manual focus. All right, there we go. Um, yeah, it kind of they're very strange doors and they. Um, I, they're real small, so like if I tried to walk into it, my head would hit them. I, and I wanted them to not be very visible, so I painted everything white back there. Um, then uh, next up is uh, my daughter's section. She has, she's, she's basically taken this, this entire section, this corner of the room, and designated it as being part of her uh, um, dance trophy winning section, <laughs> but you, you can't see it though in the video, so I was cool with it. I didn't really care. Um, yeah, next up, this is the window that you see that's behind me usually in, in most of the videos. Uh, yeah, exciting stuff out there. Um, and then here's another guitar that I have, uh, which is an Ibanez RG470. It's kind of a mid range, it's only like a $500 guitar. The worst part of the pickups, they're not very good. Uh, but I do have a new guitar that's in the shop right now that is like a thousand times better, a Charvel DK24 HSH. Not that you really care. All right. Um, next up, we have some uh, soundproof paneling. There's four of them. One of them's about to fall off. This used to be filled up much more, but I didn't properly use the right adhesive or technique for putting them on the wall, so they fall off over time, which, you know, is okay because the microphone that I use, uh, by the way, that's my cable management on the floor. There's a, uh, yeah, cable management's not a thing for me, apparently. Um, but this microphone, this is the mic that I'm always using. 
I boy, this uh, camera's focus is just horrendous. There we go. I uh, it's I uh, a sure. Uh, what is it? SM27. This is the one that like Joe Rogan uses. A lot of other people use. It's very popular. And uh, it doesn't pick up echo, from what I can understand. Uh, it's, it's very good with you know reducing echo. Uh, so yeah, I don't really care about the panels or the the soundproofing. Uh, this this thing right here. Why is this green stuff? Well, I could take this off. I uh, because. It helps hide those bars in the video uh, when I'm recording in front of the green screen. Um, and then I just, I remove them, and this is just stupid duct tape, and it, sometimes it's too glossy so you'll see white specks in the videos. I need to get a better alternative for this, it's just like green duct tape. Uh, but this is an awesome, awesome microphone. Um, and then the green screen itself is awesome. I, I've had green screens in the past, like cloth ones that were a pain in the ass to set up. But this uh, is a uh, collapsible green screen. Uh, let me just show you real quickly. I mean, you just open this up, and then you pull on this lever right here. Look at that. It is freaking awesome. Uh, and there's no wrinkles, too. Uh, it's by Elgato. I'll, I'll put a link to all this stuff uh, if I can remember. Um, in the description here in YouTube, uh, but it's awesome. Very easy, quick, and easy to use. All right, so next up, uh, let's look at the uh, the computer setup. First, up, first of all, the studio monitors. This is for um, I I bought these probably like nine years ago uh, for music production, and so they're uh, the BX eight A M Audio studio monitors, and they're sitting on top of these stands that I made filled with sand. They're real heavy duty, but when I record. I take this monitor right here uh, on the left and I push it all the way to the back portion of that uh, corner of the desk and that monitor goes straight to the floor way over there on the side. That way it opens up the spot for my camera which is right there facing me usually. Then I also have a KRK10 subwoofer, um, studio subwoofer. It is loud as hell. It's awesome. Um, and then we have my Cintiq, which is a Wacom uh, Cintiq 22 HD. I don't ever use it anymore. It's just a, a monitor that can move up and down. It's pretty awesome though. Um, but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really use it to actually draw. It was like a $2,000 um, waste of money essentially, which, yeah, oh well. A little bit impulsive on the, the buy sometimes. So now let me go ahead and show you um, my recording process. So we'll, we'll switch over to the desktop now. All right, so um, right now this is just, uh, I have a, obviously the green screen's up behind me. It's being keyed out right now by a software called vMix, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Um, and right here is the desktop. Um, and vMix, I really freaking like. Um, let me show you, it's gonna be a little bit disorienting, disorienting at first when I drag this screen over from my other monitor, um, because I, it's gonna give you feedback because it's it's gonna be showing the application itself along with uh, the desktop, so it creates this feedback. But what I'll do to remedy that, this is vMix by the way, I'm going to cut, uh, I'm gonna to cut to something that's just like the audio thing, so it's gonna be blank. Now you do see me flickering on and off here. That doesn't show up in the video. Uh, it has something to do with the preview. It's kind of annoying. But anyhow, when I'm when I'm recording or streaming, this is on that left monitor over there. Um, not maximized, but just so I can see to make sure this is what sh you know I'm I'm where I need to be or something uh, in terms of showing the right stuff and myself. Um, so down here you have all these different things here. Um, I forget what they're, they're called inputs. Um, like for instance, if I cut to this one, this is coming direct, directly from my Panasonic Panasonic Lumix G7 camera. Uh, and I have two of them, but I, I really only just use one. Um, and that's the one that's facing me uh, uh, in, in front, in the back of the room that I showed you, I think briefly. Um, and it's just being keyed out right now. Like if I go to preferences, uh, color adjust, uh, we can see that the color key is on, but if I take it off, this is obviously what I sort of look like. It's kind of really zoomed up here um, in the back, and then this just automatically keys out the, the, the green screen. Um, and then what's cool is that we also have right here a desktop capture input. All right, so this is purely just the desktop. Um, it's a little bit less disorienting if I, if I bring that over there. Um, but then it allows you to create another input where you can combine these two like this. 
so ordinarily I how I used to do it back in the day is I would just I would directly uh, capture from my um, my my Panasonic Lumix G7 camera uh, and I would record right to um, the media that was on the camera uh, and then I would use something like Camtasia Studio to record the 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 um, desktop and then I would have to go into something like uh, Adobe Premiere and add those two on top of each other well this is recording this screen this input that I currently have selected uh, and I don't have to do that. It automatically adds me uh, in front of the media, which is very handy. Um, also, another thing I'll show you is if I cut, uh, let me just move this over for a second. Notice the the bars here. These usually don't show up in the uh, the the footage for my tutorials because it just it was weird having these big long bars right here. And that's where the uh, these things come into play that I showed you earlier. So because they're green, they will disappear for the most part. And like I said, because it's glossy, you can see white reflections in these sometimes, but it does a, a pretty good job for the most part. I need to get like a non-glossy version. So if I put this anywhere, I'll just, you know, this is all green, but whatever. Um, next up I uh, is uh, this this program also allows you to do really cool overlays and like um, animated overlays. For those of you who watched my stream, um, last Friday, I, I, I did the, it's, they're, they're not set up in this particular document yet, but I, I did this one through 10 rating system and I had these animations play based on, um, a, a keyboard shortcut. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention before I forget about my camera setup, I mentioned, I used to record, uh, to the media that was on the camera itself. I, one of the, you know, the, the small hard drive things that you put in there. Um, I now go from the HDMI out of my camera into a, uh, it's called a Blackmagic Pro Intensity 4K capture card. So it's a card inside my computer that I added where you can um, put in an HDMI input and this is what, uh, so the, basically I'm not saving anything to the camera, to camera's media at all. This is what's allowing me to uh, get my feed in here directly. Um, now let me show you, uh, so basically when I record, you know, this is all I'm using. I, uh, when I'm streaming, I click this button and there's configurations op options. Like for instance, for YouTube, I, uh, that you put your API key in or whatever. Um, and then when, yeah, so whenever I stream, I just click this one time I clicked it by accident and didn't know it. And I was streaming without knowing, I'm glad it, nothing bad didn't happen or whatever. <laughs> uh, there's also some other stuff like external, like if you wanted to use, um, uh, this feed for something like Skype or uh, some other software, then um, vMix will show up as an input for you to be able to use that. Um, so yeah, very powerful program, um, a lot of um, options to it. Um, now let me show you, after I'm done recording uh, like a tutorial or something like that, I, oh, and by the way, before I forget, uh, when I record a tutorial, usually at the very beginning, you're going to see me without the green screen. It's just, it shows the background of my room. I, I'll record that first. Um, no, no, no. I record the tutorial first, and then I record that intro to just because I know what the tour exactly happened in the tutorial. Um, and then I also record that outro at the same time as the intro. Um, and so then I'll have multiple um, files in my, my folder that are mp4 files that vmix outputs based on that so then i open up adobe premiere i uh, which is what i use um, for editing afterwards and, and piecing together those things so this is just an example tutorial this is like uh, my 2019 scroll video from a while ago um, I don't have the actual footage in the clips because i ended up just like removing those afterwards but this is the the, the timeline project um, the setup and this is pretty similar to how most of them look. So first right here, and again, it's, it's offline, unfortunately, this is me without the green screen, just saying one sentence about what you'll learn, just to try to hook people in and let them know exactly, you know, what I'm going to be doing in the tutorial. And then right here is the little intro blip that you see. And this is also where that music starts, the background music. You're not going to be able to hear it because I don't think I'm getting this feed, the audio feed from Premiere. But um, then uh, this is a Skillshare ad that I have because they sponsor my videos now and have for a few months. Um, and then after that uh, little ad there, we do um, another introduction where I'm still not in front of the green screen. I just come back and I talk and I elaborate more about what you'll learn. 
Um, this is also where I usually ask the question, like today's question, what is the one thing you want me to teach in 2019, whatever. Um, and that just kind of pops up. I just add that real, well, basically this is a Photoshop uh, template that I use and I edit it in Photoshop, save it and then import it in here. Um, and then I, this is where the actual uh, tutorial will, will begin. And I named them like one, two, three. Sometimes if I'm screwing up when I'm recording a tutorial, which happens most of the time, uh, I'll, I'll stop vMix, I'll hit that record button, turn it off, and then I'll figure out what I need to, to do to remedy whatever situation occurred or if like somebody was loud or if a kid entered my room or something, I'll just restart and I'll call that two. Uh, and three and four or whatever. So then I just start to piece them together. And I, I tr for the most part, I, I do try to go through it quickly to make sure nothing bad didn't happen uh, or some type of error. Um, and you can see there's a cut right here. This cut between the same film or, or the document of one, uh, I probably screwed up something and I just cut that part out and then I just bring these back together. Um, and so this goes all the way. This particular video is like 20 something minutes. And then at the end, I have the outro portion where I have my outro, where I transition from the green screen footage to the outro footage right here. Um, this is again, me without the green screen. Just I mean, usually I say something like, all right, hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, if you liked it, make sure you subscribe, blah, blah, blah. You've heard it all before. Uh, if you watch to the end of the videos. And then I have this, um, end screen um, animation with uh, music. And it's, this right here just serves, um, as you can see, it's just, it doesn't really look like it's much of anything, but it's just rock, heavy rock music, um, along with just some me, like water ver watermarked version of me in some other tutorial a while ago. Um, and this gives me space here to add in um, the YouTube uh, suggestions and such. And that is essentially it then once i have this all edited and ready to go which really for the average video if it's like 20 minutes long it only takes me like 10 minutes to get all this set up um then i just go to file and i go to export and i export it i uh, export the media and i uh, yeah just export it uh, in mp4 uh, version of the file and then um after that I have to also go into Photoshop and I'll edit um, my YouTube uh, thumbnails. I, so, and that's just a 1920 by 1080 uh, document. And I have variations of myself uh, in different t-shirts for the thumbnail. So I don't always use the same t-shirt that I appeared in in the video, but I have like eight of them or 10 or something of them, just different ones with different expressions and stuff. Um, as you can see, some of them right here. So like this one, I really cut myself out bad in this one, I think, like the hair's all messed up. Uh, yeah, this is where I, I do the YouTube thumbnails. So I can edit all of these and, and, and adjust the background or do whatever, and then just save them. And then I um, go ahead and hit upload and add the necessary information, like the tags. Uh, and tags are important to try to pick out the right tags and all that and the description and all that stuff. But yeah, that is basically it. All right, so you guys can stop hounding me now. You now know which software I use and what my office looks like and all that stuff. Uh, and also answer today's question, which is what is the best thing about your office? All right, make sure you sub up and I'll see you guys soon, goodbye.